most of everything was kept inside the UDV. So given that, and given that there's a tremendous amount of land still available, I would propose the following, and that is that those who want to build outside the UDV, let them submit yearly applications now for 2026. That they have to renew every year if they want to still have their eye on a particular piece of land, and we'll look at it. 2024, 2025, I think that would be a smart way to go and listen to what the experts say. Thank you. I would believe that a, uh, a, a very good design of mixed-use facilities along the US-1 corridor would be a phenomenal idea as long as we don't have towering structures that are, I mean, just massively huge. Um, I would believe that it would benefit the transit system that is a little weak on the south end of the county and would force more people to take the transit, which is a desired uh, effect of having people live in the pocket areas. A mixed use would also provide you know, store frontage on the bottom levels of some of these uh, buildings that would make just going downstairs to pick up a few items a feasible thing versus driving across town to get a Publix. Um, it, it, it makes sense for people my age to live in these uh, tight buildings that it fits my budget. I don't have to purchase a house with vast amounts of land. I don't have lawn care, you know, that would uh, take from the water supply. Uh, it is economically pleasure, pleasant for me to uh, you know, be able to pay my bills without being stressed to the max, and if this uh, stage of the game of this decade is leading to, I need to be wise with my cash, and this would be a, a very good way to do that. I'll tell you, um, I think that most of us here are, are agree on a lot of issues and we're probably going to be like this all night, but let me just say um, that there's a few things that have been said that, that caught my attention. Um, the, we have already had some building on US-1, on the US-1 corridor. And one perfect example is the Dayland uh, station. And the first thing that comes to my mind is that most of that is empty. Um, so although it's good that we do things that are in the US-1 corridor for the traffic reasons, we also have to think of, is there a need right now when we have so many empty, empty, uh, locations and for the future coming uh, coming down the road we have a lot of empty spots I actually went yesterday and looked to see how many empty homes or how many homes do we have for sale in our area and there is uh, there were I think 899 homes yes for sale as of last night uh, just on the western most uh, nearest the UDB line um, um, I do want to say something about the watershed study. Um, it, is a, it is a wonderful study, but it is very important to note that after we spent four years doing that study, and I know people that were part of that study, um, and spent a tremendous amount of time, it was shelved, and, it is, and, and the county commission is not allowed to use it. So it is, it is, a, it is a shame, and we spent millions of dollars on it. Um, I think we need transparency, and those um, people that come before the commission or the, whose neighborhoods are affected, they should be allowed to say how they feel, how they're affected, so that not just the developers and the lobbyists have a voice. such as parking recreation budgets, 
and funding for maintenance of natural areas. What principles would you use to prioritize revenues and expenditures in the face of declining property tax revenues? So what principles would you use? On what basis would you make the decisions? And for that, we're going to start to my right. Thank you. We've got to return to the core purposes of government. And I think we've got some good opportunities with the cities, with our regional governments. And the first thing we need to do is make sure we aren't duplicating efforts. We need to be cooperative. And that's what I think we've been in my city. We've been very cooperative and, and not overlapping, not duplicating services with the county or partner. And I think if everybody tries to quit doing everything for everyone, and starts looking at core services and do what they, the people pay the taxes for, that's the first step. You gotta do first what needs to be done. Priorities is some very hard decisions that need to be made. And you gotta have some public meetings, transparency. People have to understand it's gonna be a shared pain. Because the answer right now is not to raise taxes. People are hurt now. A lot of foreclosures going. People are close uh, to barely being able to make it. But as I said, when you go through and look at everything that's in there, it needs to be evaluated. Is it the core purpose? Is it nice to have? Is it a must have? And then you go down. You gotta protect your essential services, police, fire. You also have to protect your parks. Now with that in mind, one of the things that we've promoted as part of our legislative plan every year is I do think it's a priority for things like Florida Forever and the state legislature and to help down here with the, the, the local government. Why is that important when we're talking about police, fire, and school? Well, because of the economy, the sale of property, for one time, you have a perfect mix of willing sellers now of some properties you didn't have before. And this is the time that you've got to make those investments because if those opportunities are missed, when things do rebound, you're still not gonna be able to afford to do it. And uh, those properties may be gone and moving on to development. So that's one aside I want to put in there that I do think is very important. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Our fiscal situation is the number one concern of everybody in Dade County. I stopped a lady today who works for the county. She was delivering something to a school and I said, do you like working for the county? She said, I did in 1980. I said, and now? She goes, no, my job is at stake, jobs are being lost, and everybody's fighting. So what's very important is that we maintain fiscal responsibility. We've heard it, but it's not something that is uh, so easy to come by. You've got to see what you've got coming in, and then you can afford whatever it is that you can. If it means cutting back, it means cutting back, and looking for ways to be able to do something that's less expensive. I went to the South Florida Youth Symphony the other night. This is an outreach program that goes into the inner cities. A lady named Marjorie Hahn, she's reaching 200 plus students. Whatever her salary is, that's it. But they're promoting the arts uh, in the, uh, for the underprivileged neighborhoods. And when we have situations where politicians are padding the pockets of their cronies and something like a half a billion dollars going to this stadium that I didn't vote for. Did you vote for it? <laughs> no. Okay? But that should have been a vote to the people. And that money could have been redirected to keep parks and do such other things. So that when major situations are like this, that we don't have to look and read in the papers that, oh, they're going to go ahead and do it? Well, pardon me, but... Uh, it's not the way government should be run. Thank you.